Welcome to Community Producers. My name is Olivia Slade. Here we are at the University of Lethbridge, where students have begun to start the new year. First off, we are going to the Student Success Center, where you can learn how to start the new year off right. Hi, this is Aaron Chubb for the Student Success Centre here at the University of Lethbridge. I'm the Learning Strategist here also reporting for Shaw TV. Classes are now well underway here at the University of Lethbridge and just some tips for students who are getting into their studies. Uh, certainly now is a good time to start learning your stuff. Don't wait until midterms, don't wait until finals because it does certainly take a long time to learn things. So the earlier the better for sure. Um, don't feel like it's too early to start memorizing things, to start learning things because you do want it in your long-term memory. Um, it, right now is well. Uh, it's also easier to get an appointment say in counseling or it's easier to book an appointment with a learning strategist or the writing center so if you can get those meetings in now before they get too booked up I'd recommend that to students as well. Um, for students who are brand new um, certainly making sure that you under you know, know everything that you need to do uh, that you've written down when your assignments are due on some sort of calendar so you can see when it all is before the, before the crunch really starts. Uh, right behind us here we have the library if you may have term papers that you need to be writing now is also a good time to go talk to the librarians before things get too busy and you can get started on those papers now rather than later. Even a little bit each day helps to avoid that crunch at the end. For Student Success Center and Shaw TV, I'm Aaron Chubb. For the first time in a long time, it was a short off-season for the Lethbridge Hurricanes. The boys of winter are back at it with training camp now in the books and preseason hockey now underway. The Hurricanes made it all the way to the Eastern Conference final last season, losing out to the Regina Pats. Although the team has only had a couple of months off, it is time to get things rolling once again. General Manager Peter Anholt knows his team raised the bar big time last season. I think we've established certain expectations that uh, you know, this is what we do, this is how we play, and this is how we act. And, you know, we, we, we've come a long, long ways in two years. And we expect uh, to keep moving forward with that. We're not perfect yet by any stretch. And, um, you know, I, I think that. We've got lots of players coming back and we're pleased about that. But th that being said, there's lots of competition. I, I think there's, uh, we've got some real good guys coming in and to push for jobs uh, to make us better as a team. So, you know, that, that bodes well for not only the present, but I believe the future. As mentioned, the Hurricanes have a long contingent of returning players this season, and that all starts with their anchor man, goaltender Stuart Skinner. The Edmonton Oilers draft pick has been the backbone of this team for the past few years now, and Anhold feels this is a key season for number 74 between the pipes. We expect Stewie to play the majority of the games this year. There's no doubt about it. This is this is his year to be a horse and uh, and to take another step from what he did last year. Um, you know, I, I thought that he had a strong season last year, but I think he can be a lot better yet. And and for him to be a pro at this time next year. Uh, he's got some work to do in his development, and that's great. I mean, he's come, he's come so far in his development in the in the three years that he's been here, uh, and we'd like to finish that off with a real strong year uh, in his fourth year. Um, that being said, I mean, Swanee certainly wants to establish himself as a as a solid backup, and and we're going to have to make sure that we, you know have some competition at that position over the next not only this year but uh, for next year. Another thing the Hurricanes have going for them this coming season is experience. A long playoff run last year gave a lot of these players a taste of what it takes to win. Anhold feels that should be a big bonus for his club this year as well. Well I mean I, I think we've got experience. I, I think you know, um, we've got lots of young guys that played key roles in, in some important games for us last year. That should should speak well for their development and speak well for um, our hockey club moving forward. Uh, that being said, 
Show me, don't tell me. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, we, we believe we're on the right track with, with all, with our team, but, but individually with our players, I think we're on the right track with our guys. So, um, you know, we, we expect them to come in and be better this year than they were last. And, and, and if they're not, then we've fallen behind and and there's going to be somebody moving in to take take uh, take their spot so you know you can't you can't stand still because if you stand still you're falling behind so we got to keep moving forward with our guys for a fan base which has been starving for a winning team again the last two seasons have reignited the passion for the hurricanes the regular season opens september 22nd when the hurricanes host the rival medicine hat tigers at the nmac center for the community producers, I'm Pat Sidlecki. Drones are taking off in Lethbridge, literally. In this segment, we are going to talk to local drone enthusiast Mike Smith, who discusses the popularity and what you need to know before getting into this hobby. Hey, my name is Mike Smith, and I've uh, been a hobbyist for uh, about eight years, since 2009, with the uh, Mac membership and playing around with the helicopters and airplanes, and now into the multi rotors, the UAVs, which are really taking off. Just to be brief and give you a quick idea of what a UAV is, there are many names for them, including drones, UAS, which is an unmanned aircraft or aerial system, UAV, which is an unmanned aerial vehicle. A UAV is an aircraft without a human pilot on board. UAVs are a component of an unmanned aircraft system, which is the UAS, which include a UAV, a ground-based controller, and a system of communications between the two. Unfortunately, the name drone can give a negative impact for some or give the uh, immediate idea of war. What the public has to understand is today's small UAVs have so many new and positive avenues for growth for the economy. There are very many applications that the UAVs are used for, including the most common, which be military or situations where a manned flight is considered too risky or difficult. But here are some of the, let's call them new and positive jobs that UAVs are getting used for today. A unique one is hurricane hunting. The UAV can charge into the heart of the storm without risking human life, giving new data for study. Using the camera on the UAV for mapping, today is a big one offering 3D modeling, surveying to measure distances between objects, protecting wildlife. Thermal imaging can monitor wildlife populations or map roads and wetlands for land management purposes. Farming, this one is new and growing faster than anything. From inspecting irrigation, looking for a, a lost nozzle, checking crops with the aerial photos, or just simply counting cattle. Another one is search and rescue, and the use of UAVs in this application is a true blessing. Imagine an area that would take days to be searched, can now take a drone only a couple of hours, and save lives. And finally, for recreation, hobbyists are loving being able to take those family shots and selfies you could only dream of getting. As a UAV hobbyist, I've never had the pleasure of profiting from flights, but over the years I've sure been able to capture moments and memories from the air that will last a lifetime. Some of them include Fairmount Hot Springs, which I've heard now is a no-fly zone, Lethbridge's favorite car show, Street Machine Weekend, camping and getting that bird's eye view from above. But one of my real favorites was when I was a volunteer firefighter and had the pleasure to get some aerial footage of a controlled burn of an old farmhouse. The number one thing we need from all UAV pilots is communication to CARAC about the new regulations coming in 2018. If you have comments or feedback about the new regulations, send them to the Canadian Aviation Regulation Advisory Council at CARRAC at tcgc.ca. Without your feedback, you won't be heard. The new regulations for 2018 for UAV regulations coming into play and today's current regulations are in place for the public safety and pilot awareness of the proper flight regulations. But the real issue with UAV regulations is public awareness. If there's anything you take from this interview, I would hope it is the importance of what it is required to enjoy the benefits of flying a UAV. There are age restrictions and there are laws in place that can get you fines commercially as high as $25,000 and as high as $3,000 if you're flying recreational. 
What's really great about the new regulations coming for 2018 is you won't require an SFOC if you are a licensed, insured, and follow all the current regulations and laws. The three different levels of certification from Transport Canada allow for the pilot to have fewer restrictions. All current regulations and the new interim order and the regulations coming for 2018 can be found on the Transport Canada website. The number one reason I would have to say for UAV popularity is the ease of use and the amount of technology packed into such a small package. Because of their GPS and hovering capabilities, they almost fly themselves and only need direction from the pilot, making them one of the most simplest aircrafts to fly. But because of the vast uses for a UAV, just about anyone could find a use for one, from photography, vacation photos, farming, FPV racing, and even the vast amount of commercial applications, the number of UAV owners will only continue to grow. I would be more than happy to assist anyone looking to get into the hobby. My Facebook page is Canada UAV, or for current laws and regulations, you can visit the Transport Canada website. How much do you know about rattlesnakes? Here's some information on how to coexist with the species living in our coolies. Meet Ryan Heavyhead, an ecological consultant for the city of Lethbridge. Heavyhead says coexisting with rattlesnakes in our city and surrounding area is simple. The absolute biggest thing is just awareness. So um, um, in our parks, in our coulee parks, if you're concerned about the snakes, stay to the trails. And the trails, you can see where you're walking and what's there. Um, if you're walking through grassy areas where you can't see what's under your feet and such, you should be wearing appropriate footwear, um, not like my sandals, although although I'll, wa I'll walk through grassy areas, but I'll take a stick with me and I'll just kind of swish the grass to alert, alert a snake, you know, before I get to it, if it's there, right? So if, if you're gonna go cross country, that's what you need to do. Um, and yeah, the biggest thing is just awareness, just watching where you're stepping, watching where you're reaching, recognizing that this is a shared territory between us and rattlesnakes and hundreds of other species. The ecological consultant says there are some misconceptions people have about rattlesnakes. I think the biggest misconception that people have is that they exaggerate the threat of the rattlesnakes. We do have a good population of snakes in Lethbridge, but it's very infrequent that somebody's bitten. Uh, it's especially infrequent to get bitten just by, you know, stepping close to the snake or whatever, like ankle bites are, are pretty rare. They happen, like we had one last summer, uh, but you might have an ankle bite every 20 years. A lot of, a lot of the bites um, tend to happen between the elbow and the fingers, and it's usually young guys who are out, um, might have a little alcohol in their system and think that they can handle snakes. Mm -hmm. So it, it's pretty rare to be bit. Um, and, and I think people believe that it's a, it's a life-threatening situation. Um, like what if, my, what if my child gets bit, is it gonna kill my child or you know, my dog or what have you? Um, there's never been on record in Alberta a single person who has died of a rattlesnake bite. And here in Lethbridge, surveying the, the veterinarians, there's only one dog in the last decade or so that's been killed by a rattlesnake bite, although several dogs have been bitten every year. Heavyhead says rattlesnakes are 100% defensive and not aggressive. They have a few different lines of defense, and their first line is they just sit still and they hope that you don't see them. And that can be dangerous, like they don't, they don't necessarily, like don't trust that they're gonna give you a rattle or anything like that. They might just stay camouflaged and, and hope you pass by. And in that kind of a scenario, if you happen to step on them because you don't see them, they're gonna defend themselves and bite. If you watch my videos on the, on the Rattlesnakes of Lethbridge Facebook page, you'll see that when I'm picking up snakes, um, they typically don't, don't strike even though I'm, I'm picking them up and moving them. It's, it's later on after they're inside of my bucket and I'm transporting them and they're, and they're scared for their lives. They don't know what's happening and what kind of crazy predator thing they've, they've got themselves into. That's when they start striking. So it's, you, for a rattlesnake to bite you, um, 
you really have to be completely unaware of your environment and stepping on it or putting your hand right on it. And uh, it, when it's in fear for its life because it doesn't know you from a predator, of course it's going to strike. Heavy Head has worked with the city of Lethbridge to help with the rattlesnake mitigation process. When somebody comes across a rattlesnake um, in their yard or in in one of the city parks, not the Cooley parks per se, but the, you know some of the manicured city parks um, or on the streets and you know the rattlesnakes are just in a place with high human traffic um, I'll go to and pick up the snake and bring it back to the coulee where it's going to be safe. Recently there have been cases of rattlesnakes being disrespected in our city. Heavy Head says it's completely unnecessary. There's really no reason to kill a snake. It doesn't serve the perp like the, I think the reason that that people would kill snakes is because they consider them to be a dangerous, uh, uh, you know, animal, and that if it's let go, like I do get a lot of criti criticism, why are you just letting these snakes go? You should kill them because it's going to come back and harm somebody. The stati statistics are um, these snakes rarely harm anybody, right? <laughs> and they've been here a long time. Um, they're part of this, this life system, this ecosystem, and we really don't know enough about them to, to mess around with that population. I think um, the, you know, our safest bet is trying to preserve diversity in our ecosystem. For more information on rattlesnakes or heavy heads work, visit his Facebook page, Rattlesnakes of Lethbridge. For Community Producers, I'm Fallon Wagner. Whether you have kids in school, you take a lunch with you to work, or you're just on the go, having healthy food with you can benefit you nutritionally as well as financially. Planning ahead and taking food with you is much cheaper than eating out. I'm gonna be real with you though. I don't have the time or energy to make those lunches you find on Pinterest. I just try to keep it simple. Here are some tips I try to keep in mind when I prep lunches. I start with the main course. Wraps are a quick, easy way to get good quality protein. If you or your kid likes lettuce or tomatoes or another type of veggie, you can include them in on the wrap. A fun way to change up a boring wrap is to make cracker sandwiches. My husband's family did this when he was younger and our kids have really enjoyed eating lunch this way. Sides. There are so many things to choose from as sides for your lunches. Instead of doing chips and granola bars, skip the chips and make the granola bar your dessert. Choose fresh fruits and veggies as sides in your lunch. Prepackaged fruit cups can be a great time-saving add-on, but be choosy about what you're grabbing. I talk more about this in another episode. Added protein is always a good option, and we like cheese sticks and yogurt to help round out our lunches. Water is obviously the best choice for a drink, but full fruit juices can be a good alternative and are easily portable. The key to making lunches that will fuel you through the afternoon is to choose things you'll actually eat. It really doesn't do you any good to pack a kale salad if you know you're going to throw it out and get fast food anyway. Take enough so you'll be full and less likely to give into cravings later in the day. Wraps are just one idea. Once you find foods you can take with you that you'll eat and that are healthy, you'll have so many options available to you. If you aren't sure where to start or need some suggestions, check out my Facebook page. Hello and welcome to the Kootenay Brown Pioneer Village. My name is Farley Wood and I am the curator here at the, the Pioneer Village. This is Pincher Creek's premier museum and outdoor heritage facility. It's been in operation for over 40 years, established in the mid-1960s by the local historical society. And what we have here is a vast array of interesting artifacts and outstanding heritage buildings. Once you enter the complex through Pioneer Place, which is the newest addition to our uh, complex, it's a log building housing our archives and gift shop and entrance. You come into the Pioneer Village itself and here you find a variety of uh, old buildings uh, fully equipped with uh, artifacts and fully accessible. They all date from the uh, late 1800s and the early 1900s. Cabins include Kootenay Brown's rustic 1883 cabin from Martin Lakes and this is the first cabin moved into the complex and henceforth the village has been known as the Kootenay Brown Pioneer Village ever since then. 
We also uh, have provide uh, space for the Fishburn School, which was built in 1894, which is one of your unique uh, and lo much beloved country schools. We also have the uh, barn and the bathhouse from the Dukeberg culture. Dukeberg immigrants came into the Pincher Creek area during the First World War, and we have those unique buildings as part of our heritage. The Father of Home Hermitage was built in 1885 on the South Hill in Pincher Creek and served as the first Roman Catholic church for this community. Those are the type of things that our museum here at the Kootenai Realm Pine Village is trying to represent that frontier history in southwestern Alberta. The whole city is excited about the opening of Legacy Park on the north side. This next segment will show some of the amazing features the park will have. Welcome to the construction update for Lethbridge's Legacy Park, our north regional park. Uh, I am Chris Witkowski, the Parks Development Manager for the City of Lethbridge, and this is construction status as of July 2017. Legacy Park is a 30 hectare park with construction consisting of 90,000 cubic meters of topsoil, 220,000 square meters of seed, 1,300 trees, 3,000 shrubs, 4 kilometers of pathway, and over 28 kilometers of irrigation pipe. This park will have three ponds located in it, as well as a wetland and running creek um, that is fed from pond to pond. Uh, one unique feature in this park is an outdoor boardwalk. This will contain Lethbridge's uh, one and only outdoor groom skating rink. Once complete, uh, this skating level, the water level, will come right up to the base of the boardwalk uh, for easy access onto the, on, onto the skating surface. Uh, we're also building some benches uh, so people can put their skates on and have easy access right out to the winter recreation. Legacy Park is also going to contain multiple sports courts including basketball, tennis, pickleball, and Canada's first outdoor challenge course, an obstacle course where people can come down and try their hand American Ninja Warrior style um, through the obstacles of the North Regional Park. The park will also include a brand new skate park for all the skating enthusiasts in the city. It will be the biggest skate park located in the north end of Lethbridge. Another unique feature of this park is the Outlook and Amphitheater. Uh, overlooking one of the ponds will be an overlook where people can walk out and they'll be right over uh, the top of the water's edge. Um, they can get a nice view of the park. Uh, connected to that will be an amphitheater which will be set up for hosting different festivals and different events. The amphitheater will have a nice outlook onto one of the ponds as well as a sledding hill. The northwest corner of the park is the ornamental garden uh, complete with flagstone patio and Adirondack chairs. Uh, once complete, this garden will contain multiple uh, landscaping options like trees and shrubs. Also have pavilions, an herb garden, and uh, walking paths. This is the largest park construction project the city has undertaken in many years, with lots of unique features and amenities. We cannot wait for it to be finished and to share this beautiful space with every resident starting in spring of 2018. Can't wait to see you all there. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Community Producers. My name is Olivia Slade and we will see you next time.